Welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hendo, and today I'm talking to Zeno Gauchev, Marketing Director for MEMS Inertial Sensor Group at Analog Devices. Welcome, Zeno. Thanks. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about an important technology related to microwave systems. What are MEMS and IMUs, and how are they used in relation to microwave systems? So MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical Systems. And uh, they're micro machines, silicon mechanical beams, and resonators that can move and respond to inertial forces. Um, so they're merged together with a signal processing ASIC. And then in an IMU, we have multiple MEMS inertial sensors to sense along typically uh, six degrees of freedom, three axes of uh, linear acceleration, which require accelerometers and three axes of angular rate sensing, which uh, you know uh, require gyroscopes. Now, by having six degrees of freedom, you can orient a body within any three-dimensional reference frame if you know the initial orientation. And with our IMUs, we go beyond providing the raw sensor readings. Uh, sensors have many error sources, and we calibrate our IMUs over temperature and remove any observable errors that to the extent that we can observe them, things like offset variation over temperature, sensitivity variation over temperature, alignment between the sensors and package and other things. And so in this way, we can deliver a ready to use environmentally aware sensor to our customers uh, that offers the best possible accuracy and easy integration into their uh, end system. And so why would a microwave system need an IMU? So, you know, the primary function of an IMU and a microwave communication system is to provide feedback sensing on antenna stabilization systems, uh, you know, such as a horn antenna or a, on a gimbal or in a beam forming phase array. Uh, and this is especially common in airborne ground based, you know, surface marine type uh, vehicles. So whereas, you know, as I understand it, the alignment of an antenna's primary lobe has a direct impact on the receiver's signal strength, which directly then impacts the communication reliability, data rates, and even the power requirements of the transmission site. So in essence, you know, it's very similar to uh, the concept of image stabilization on, on cameras or optical sensing systems. And so how would one choose what IMU to use with, a, with their microwave system? Good, good question. So, you know, one has to really consider the mission profile and accuracy requirements of their system. Um, for antenna positioning, the first thing to consider is, of course, the accuracy of alignment that has to be met. You know, this will determine the noise and sensitivity requirements. Next, uh, you know, you start to add the error contributors such as offset, offset drift, um, nonlinearity, sensitivity accuracy, misalignment error, and other things. Um, and then, you know, because a lot of these are mobile platforms, one has to consider the dynamic error sources, such as broadband vibration uh, that might exist in some of these applications. And uh, this will typically lead, in a, a lead to an offset change in accelerometers. This is known as vibration rectification error. Um, and it will also lead to rate error uh, and offset change in gyroscopes as well. And that's known as linear G sensitivity and vibration rectification. And actually, I might add, you know, this is one area where analog devices excels and offers industry leading vibration rejection um, and minimum VRE in our sensors. Uh, so this is a, you know, this leads to a reduction in one of the primary error sources uh, in, in dynamic systems. Yeah, analog devices have been doing MEMS devices for a long, long time. So a lot of experience there. And so you just released a new product, the ADIS-16545. You know, what's so special about this particular IMU? Yeah, so as you said, you know, now we have a 30-year history uh, of inertial sensors. We, you know, we started with, a, you know, very simple uh, high-G shock sensors that are used even today uh, to deploy airbags and cars. Uh, we then moved to these uh, kind of consumer sensors where in the early uh, phones would be used to orient the screen um, Nintendo Wii, we all remember uh, the game controllers that you can play tennis and so on. Um, and so, you know, as the years have gone by, we've become increasingly more sophisticated in the design of our sensors and we've moved to much, uh, uh, you know, into 
high value applications where uh, you know they require the most demanding performance. So the 16.545 really provides a performance and environmental resilience at a fraction of the size, weight, power, and cost of alternative inertial sensing technolo technologies. And you know the accuracy and performance is now on par with some lower end fiber optic gyroscopes. Um, but really coming at a fraction of the cost. And so we're really pushing uh, pushing the envelope of what MEMS can achieve. And so what future enhancements or changes do you see coming down the line in the next few years? Yeah, so we continue, we're actually continuing to push that envelope and in, 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 in performance, uh, size and, and cost, um, which of course is important. Uh, and in the coming future, we'll see sensors that pack an even bigger punch uh, and, and you know, kind of push the limits of one what MEMS, uh, what MEMS can do and really you know, compellingly encroach on, on the um, you know, on the area now covered by fiber optic, uh, fiber optic technologies while offering you know, a, a much different uh, type of size, weight, and cost that allows applications to scale you know, beyond what they can get to today. Well, sounds like exciting things are coming, so we'll keep an eye out for those. Uh, thanks a lot, Zeno, for talking with me today about MEMS and IMUs, especially in relation to microwave systems where our audience can appreciate that. We thank you for your insights, and we will catch up with you at a later time. For more videos yep. in our audience, you can find them at videos.microwavejournal.com. Thanks for watching.